Good. Woo. That's nice. Ian, could you turn me down a little bit on the desk, please? Good morning, children. How are we? I just had a flashback of a school teacher that used to sing, Good morning, children. And we used to say, Good morning, Mrs. Clark. And we had to sing the Lord's Prayer. Did you ever sing the Lord's Prayer in your yeah. school assemblies? Yeah. 
Oh, what a beautiful day. It's one of those nice summery days that are not too hot. It's nice and cool. It's lovely. I've got a heap of papers to throw at you in a minute. Um, it's great for you to join us this morning at Hope Community Church. Boom, boom. Thank you. Um, is that working? Yes. Good. Let me give you a few notices on my piece of paper that I've left on my desk. <laughs> That's okay. Um, last week, we put out a uh, nice a little table like this with a few dates on for our work days. And I'm really, really, really grateful that you all put your names down. But uh, it got vandalized by a few children and it's nowhere to be seen this morning. So we have made another one with a few more dates on it because I did get the date wrong as well. So, so these uh, four fresh dates, uh, the 22nd, the 12th, the 19th, the 26th, uh, July and August. If you want to, can help us on one of those mornings, we would like to get a few jobs done in the church and we need lots of hands. So have a look at the dates and please put your name down if you can. And uh, that would be really, really, really helpful. Also, um, if you would like to um, receive a weekly email for uh, the Hope Community Church with links and Bits and bobs keeps you up to date with things that are going on. And also, you would like to register your details with us so we know where you live, so I can come and stalk you and lick your windows. Um, you can put your name on this contact form, which you will find on there. Uh, and then I will be at your house tonight at 12 o'clock. Um, <laughs> How tra training how to wash windows, maybe, maybe. <laughs> um, also, we are a couple of weeks away from having our guest Trudy Makepeace come and join us for a Sunday morning. Um, it wasn't planned, but we're going to go with the flow, and I'm really looking forward to Trudy coming to uh, share with us. Uh, an incredible story. She'll be bringing her book. Uh, and yes, yeah, she's got lots and lots of enthusiasm, passion for Jesus, and that's what we need. She's got a great story to share, and it would be a great morning again for you guys to bring your friends to. Uh, hopefully you've got friends. You've got us. We're your friends. Um, but it'd be a great morning for you to uh, invite people to. Uh, feel free to grab some flyers. Uh, there's some more on the table here, uh, stick them through people's doors, do whatever you want, uh, but do it nicely. Uh, and then also, uh, there is uh, Prama, who uh, throughout the summer uh, have been, for the last three, four years, have been doing holiday at home. All the information about holiday at home is here is a series of days out in a relaxed environment where you can enjoy a fun day meeting new friends and eating some delicious food. Uh, anyone aged over 65, put your hand up if you're aged over 65. It's for you. It's for you. Um, so it's number of activities. Each uh, in, there's three different churches. Monday the 7th, the street party at BCC down the road. Wednesday the 16th of August, Emmanuel Church. Friday the 25th of August, let's make music at Boscombe Salvation Army. So you're going to bang a drum. Who knows? Uh, they are, we used to host them. Uh, we really wanted to, but we just kind of uh, want to give all our volunteers a bit of a break as much as possible this summer. Um, but we have done it for a number of years, and I think we've always had the best reviews, haven't we, Dan? We've always smashed it out of the park. Um, so, but yeah, our volunteers need a rest, definitely. So... Um, more information is on this sheet here, and there's a sign-up sheet here that you fill in. Um, I think you can do it online, but it's probably, you can, I don't know where you take this to. Give it to me, and I'll, I'll stick it 
through a letterbox. Uh, so fill that in, five pounds. Uh, if you can't afford it, speak to us and the church will pay for you. Is that all right? Is that okay, Rob? <laughs> so, um, and they are actually really, really fun days if you're over 65. If you're 63 and a half, I reckon they'll let you in. If you're 62, maybe not. You're too young. Put your hands up if you're 62. You're too young, Rob. You're not far off, though. He's not 62. <laughs> How old is he? Don't know. <laughs> that put the you on the spot, didn't it? He's 64. He's 64. Oh, you can get in. Oh. You no. don't look it. No, you don't look a day over no, 18. I've kept you well. <laughs> so, there are a few notices um, that I needed to get through. So, everything's on that table for you to have a peruse, have a look, and... Um, also, you should have hopefully believed, uh, believed, received even, a lovely bulletin from our glamorous assistant, Roger, with his dashing summer shirt on, um, for everything else going on this week. Good. I've got that out of the way. Are you well? Yes. Good. Yes? Good? Good. And also, uh, if you've received the bulletin, uh, it's one all, because Matthew spots some typos, so um, he... Some, found some mistakes that I made. You will notice in the dates. Um, I've, ju I've missed it. I've, you, you'll see. Don't worry. You don't need me to po point out you. But I did it last night while I was watching England play cricket. So I apologise. Um, I might have been a bit distracted. Uh, normally I get away with it, but Matthew is guaranteed to point it out for me. So we, we started a few weeks ago, so it's one all. So every week... Hopefully next week, I'm going to get it back and make no mistakes. This is what I need to be motivated, people. Competition. Competition. Should we stand? <sighs> if you are a visitor to the church, um, or you haven't got a Bible, there are a number of these Bibles over on this table here. Feel free to take one. If you would like to go get take one and give it to your friends, feel free to take it. These are, they're the official Hope Community Church Bible now, okay? And they are shockingly small. <laughs> so I'm going to try and read from it today. And what's always nice is when, you, when you're new to church, it's easy to find the page of a Bible rather than the passage and verse, isn't it? So we, we'll try and do that. So I'm going to read... Uh, from Psalm, pick a psalm, any psalm, Psalm 56, on page 272, Rachel. Have you got your church Bible with you? You need to open it at church 72. Okay, wonderful. Psalm 56 says, Be gracious to me, O God, for man tramples on me. Feel trampled this week? Nice hat. That's another one as well. What is this array of hats you are bringing now, Mohan? What's it going to be next week? JVT? Who knows? Anyway, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Are you feeling trampled? Yes. Some of us, eh? Some of us. All day long an attacker oppresses me. My enemies trample on me all day long, for many attack me proudly. When I'm afraid, I put my trust in you. In God, whose word I praise, in God I trust, I shall not be afraid. Good morning, Shefflin Charles, how are you? It's all right, you're not late, don't worry. You're actually on time. Uh, what can flesh do to me? All day long they injure my cause, all their thoughts are against me for evil. They stir up strife, they lurk, they watch my steps as they have waited for my life. For their crime will they escape. In wrath cast down the peoples, oh God, this is a cheery psalm, isn't it, today? <laughs> you have kept count of my tossings, put my tears in your bottle. Collecting tears? Are they not in your book? Then my enemies will turn back in the day when I call. This I know, what, that God is for me. In God whose word I praise, in the Lord whose word I praise, in God I trust, I shall not be afraid. What can man do to me? I must perform my vows to you, O God. I will render thank offerings to you. For you have delivered my soul from death. 
yes, my feet from falling, that I may walk before God in the light of life. Yeah. You may have had a horrible week this week. You may have had a good week, a joyful week. It's okay. These days, Sunday gathering are about reminding ourselves who God is, reminding ourselves who we are because of him, reminding ourselves that whatever else is going on outside these four doors, I'm on God's side and God is with me and he's for me and he's fighting for me and he's protecting me. And it's good to remind ourselves because when we get out there and we're collecting our tears in bottles, when we get out there and we're feeling torn and oppressed, we forget sometimes who we are, whose we are, and who's for us. So we're going to spend some time this morning worshipping. We're going to spend some time reinforcing God's promises over our lives, that he will never leave us nor forsake us. The team are going to lead us in worship, and they're going to get spiritual now because they're going to start to play. And we need to remind ourselves sometimes, because it's easy. When we're on our own, we forget that God is with us. When we've been attacked, when we've been oppressed, when people are punching us left, right and centre, we forget. Sometimes we need to remind ourselves. When David says, bless the Lord, O my soul, he's speaking to himself. We're going to speak to our souls this morning, church. Amen? Amen. Father, we welcome you today. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your protection. We thank you, Lord, for life. We thank you, Lord, for your generosity. We thank you, Lord, for your love. We thank you, Lord, for your care, your compassion, your mercy. We thank you, Lord, for who you are today, Lord. And that this week, Lord, wherever we've been on this journey of life, you have always been by our side. You've never left us. You haven't forsaken us, Lord. You're still here with us. And for that, Lord, we thank you today. And we choose to lift ourselves up out of the mess today and give you the worship, Lord, that you deserve. You are a holy God and you deserve, Lord, our celebration. You deserve, Lord, our reverence. You deserve, Lord, all that we can give you, Lord. And so we choose to sing songs to you, Lord, as an offering of worship because we love you. We love you. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Let's Bless the Lord, oh my soul.
him in this place this morning, freedom to worship in your own voice, your own song, your own song. Give him the praise, give him the worship that he deserves. set apart to live and serve a holy God. We want to be your people, Lord, passionate people of God that carry, Lord, a presence, that carry, Lord, a fire, a passion for your name, for who you are, for what you've done, for what you want to do, and Lord, for what you want to do in us and through us, Lord. We want to be your people, Lord. We want to be set apart, living for you, Lord. Holy Spirit, consume us. Lord, flow through this place. Lord, all that is not of you, Lord, in our lives. Give us, Lord, wisdom. Give us, Lord, strength. Give us, Lord, a desire and a hunger, Lord, to live and serve you. That we would be known as a passionate people. Full of Jesus, full of hope for those around us, Lord, for our community. Stir it up, Lord. Thank you, Father, for your presence today. Thank you, Lord, for the Holy Spirit who walks with us, the one that comes alongside, who gives us all that we need to continue to live and serve you, Lord. Fill our lives, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 Take a seat for a moment, guys. We're going to just leave a space now for...
anyone to come and share how their week's been. If you're brave, maybe you want to come and share what God's been saying to you this week or showing you or how he's been helping you. Maybe you've got some prayers that you want to lead us in. Hello, Patsy. Come over this way. I just wanted to update everyone, actually, because um, there's a few changes. Well, first of all, I've got a new grandson. So, <laughs> yeah, he, he was born on the 28th of June. I've got some pretty graphic photos that I showed Liam earlier, <laughs> if anyone wanted to see. I didn't want to see them. <laughs> you did or you I didn't? I didn't say no. <laughs> but were they worth seeing, though? <laughs> no. <laughs> um, also, my um, daughter-in-law's mum is has improved um, a fair bit. She's um, breathing herself now, and um, uh, the the sedation that's gone. She's still. The last I heard was that um, they're thinking about taking the tubes out so she can Brilliant. start eating and drinking. Mm. So, you know, it's still there's still prayer needed there. Um, also, I've got an update. My operation's not on the 17th of April, any, uh, July anymore. It's on the 3rd of August. <laughs> so I'll be hanging around for a little bit longer. And, uh, but I still would value prayers on it all because um, I'm just trusting God all the way with this. Um, and, uh, yeah, that's it. Brilliant. Thanks, Patsy. Anyone else? Come on, Joan. Oh, it's a race, it's a race, it's a race, it's a race. I wanted to see you both run and dive for the microphone. I can't run so good as I used to. <laughs> In my heart, I run. Anyway, um, just to say, don't get disheartened if nothing seemingly happens when you do something for the Lord. For instance, I'm a great one for giving out tracts, etc., and I've known several people who have actually been converted from receiving a tract. One was a chap just given it to, uh, and he put it on his kitchen table. Mm. His wife was converted, then he was converted. Mm. And uh, you women, you got some of <laughs> And And you remember the chap who was in Australia, and he stood in a doorway, remember them, don't you? <laughs> and stood in a doorway for years and just would step out, give somebody a track, say, do you know where you're going when you die? And it was years before, and I think it was Lansdowne Baptist, that they had people popping up all over the place saying, this chap in Australia gave me this and I was converted. And co <laughs> so nothing is ever wasted. And then I um, went down with my son, because he goes with others, down to the town to evangelize and give out tracks, and I gave some of the Barry Woodward tracks. And uh, he, um, and I was going, I parked my car, and it's a dickens of a job to park your car nowadays. It is in Bournemouth, yeah. You can't yeah. put cash in, you can't put the card in. It has to be on the app. And this young lady was there, <laughs> and I said, you couldn't help me, could you? <laughs> and bless her heart, she even put it on her app, and then I gave her the money. Oh. And, uh, and I said, oh, I've delayed you doing your job, going to your work, you see. No, I am, I'm freelance, etc." And I said, what's your name? Her name was Lydia. And we were talking about Lydia. And, uh, and there's a still a group now called Lydians who pray for the country. And uh, I said, oh, that's a very biblical name. And she said, oh, yeah, I was the, the first one in Europe to be converted. She knew that, you see, from the Bible. Anyway, I found out what she did. She's a pedicurist. And so I, <laughs> I said, oh, I need a pedicure. So came, and she's such a lovely person. And I gave her a New Testament, and I gave her <laughs> I said, that's where it is in the Bible, about Lydia. And so I'm expecting great things. Yeah. I'm just saying about the Word of God. We wouldn't be here without the Word of no. God. And just to say, the Gideons, which, you know, I joined last year, and they've been very dormant in the Bournemouth area for, since COVID. <coughs> And the people running it, who Liam had here some years ago, uh, they've really got a few health issues and are trying to step down. Mm. But anyway, they're having a recruiting evening on Wednesday night at Moordown Baptist at 7.30. So they're trying to, re you know, re reignite the, um, the Bournemouth area. 
So praise the Lord. Got to the lead us in God. prayer for that now, Dorothy. We'll yeah, yeah, sure. Stay in amen. <coughs> Lord Jesus, we just thank you for your word. Mm. You became the word and dwelt among us. So mm. we just thank you for that word. Right, that word we couldn't exist. And it's like a two-edged sword. And we've no heard of testimonies that it saved people in the hotels yeah. from committing suicide. It saved people in the prisons. Yeah. And people who've been giving them out in the schools and, and the universities. Lord, it has, your word will not return void. Yeah. So, Lord, we just pray that Bournemouth area will be ignited yeah. again and that we'll see a mighty revival, not only with us but with the, all the churches, yes, and Lord. that we'll see your word go forth Lord. like a mighty army we will be. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And on the, uh, <laughs> hold on. Keep going. <laughs> I, I, weren't gonna, I was at a princess meeting last night. A what? A princess meeting. We're princesses, you know. We're princesses. Okay. <laughs> it's put on by the Africans. It started by a Zimbabwean African pastor. And it's been going for some years. They used to meet in a church in Winton. And now they have it in a hotel. And all Ooh. these big African mamas dancing. And it's really exhilarating. And when I went to see my friend in Wolverhampton, this particular pastor, she gave us a lift to the Wolverhampton coach station. Myself and Grace. And uh, I was chatting away, and she said, you can give your testimony if you like. And then somebody rang last week, it can only be three minutes, trying to condense a testimony in three minutes. Uh -huh. <laughs> but I gave it last night, and I got a bit choked up. Oh, well done. <laughs> yeah, so I'll give it another in time. In Wolverhampton? <laughs> you were in Wolverhampton? No, I was in Eastlands Hotel. Oh, okay, I yeah, thought you so were no, I was in Wolverhampton to see my friend, ah. and then this lady gave us a lift to the uh, coach Amazing. station. And then that's how it happened. That's three so minutes. Yeah, three minutes. <laughs> Good stuff. Good stuff. Hello, Jenny. Morning, Liam. You're right. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it's been an eventful week. <coughs> um, I'd encourage you to come to the encounter meetings on a Sunday night because uh, I think corporate prayer, um, when people gather together and pray, things happen. Um, last Sunday, my grandson was due. Um, and uh, I was in two minds ready to come to the encounter meeting, and I, I just felt that if I came, things would happen. <laughs> and uh, I came anyway. And uh, Patsy prayed for my grandson, and she thought he was going to be he was due on the Monday. Um, and so I let her carry on praying. Um, and then um, the early hours of Monday morning, um, uh, my daughter's contractions were coming so fast. We had to get the ambulance over, and she was blue-lighted over to um, poor hospital. During the pregnancy as well, I was also praying that she'd be, the baby would be born in a safe place in the hospital, and Joy mm. didn't want to have a home birth either. So, um, yeah, she, they got her to hospital, and the baby was born 12 minutes after the Wee. ambulance. <laughs> the ambulance got there, so th that's just real. Did you hear that? The baby was born. You can celebrate that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And he's fine. Yay, um, so Oscar! Yes, yes. yes, another one for you to play. <laughs> and um, yeah, that was you know I was so blessed and at peace that they were all, they were all right. And she was out of hospital in the afternoon when she was shopping yesterday. I think as the baby grew. Wow! Um, so <laughs> she's doing so well. Uh, praise the Lord. And then another um, praise report was I went to Swanage I think on Friday, and uh, my son who had severe OCD so bad during COVID that he wouldn't even pick up a knife and fork um, to eat, um, was skipping stones on the beach and mm. picking up dirty oh. pebbles. And, and I thought, I was amazed, I thought, because I hadn't seen that for years, and I said, he's picking up stones and he's throwing them, dirty stones, well, pebbles were. And uh, yeah, and that was just, to me, it's only a little thing, but to yeah. me, that's like a miracle. Yeah. And you know, people, again, have been praying and all glory to the Lord for what he can do. Thank you. Come on. Thanks, Liam. Love the shirt, mate. Thanks, mate. Um, I just wanted to give you guys an update on Lisa, the lady who had, had had so many operations, and she's been in hospital now for nearly a year, but mm. on and off, because she had a six and a half month period, and now she's gone back in for a long period of time, so it's getting on for a year. And she's actually finally going home next Thursday. So we need to pray for next Thursday that it all happens. But it's very, very, very dangerous, her being at home, because it has to be 
um, uh, because of her, the only way she is, is fed, literally, is through the bloodstream. And so she has to have these changes of filters in a sterile environment and nothing must get in, otherwise it's really, really, really dangerous. So mm. prayers all round for her. And we're just praying for Craig and George too, the, her husband and little ones. Thanks. Just lead us in prayer, Lord. Yeah, Father God, I lift up Lisa and Craig yes, and, and George to you right now. I just pray f um, a mighty blessing on them. Yes, They've been through Lord. so very much. And I just pray that they'll, first of all, come to know you as their Lord and Saviour. And secondly, that you'll just be with them at every yeah. step of the way as this recovery turns into a new section of uh, life, a new chapter for them, Father God. And I just pray that, that your anointing will be there and a blessing on them as they um, take on this bold next step of, of trying to get her home. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Rog. You right, Adam? You'll have to bear with me. This is as much for me as it is for you. Um, I'm not going to bore you with the details. I've not had the best week. But a song came to my mind just now, and I'm just going to tell you. I might even be brave enough to sing it. No, I won't do that. <laughs> Fix your eyes upon Jesus. How does the words go? Stare into his, look to his wonderful face. And the things of the earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace, or something like that. So, upon yeah, that Jesus. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Strangely dim. Need a composer. So, in the light of his glory and grace. Yeah, come on. Fix your eyes upon him. He, it sounds really simplistic. He has the answer to everything that you need. Amen. Absolutely everything. And that's my need to state that as a statement of faith in front of you. To say, I'm his. You're his. That's how it is. Amen. Cheers, Adam. Thank you, Mark. <laughs> so true. I remember listening to that song, Walking Out to Feed Sheep. That was on, on my little MP3 player, one of the first worship music tunes that I'd ever seen. Shall we stand? I was just thinking of a quick testimony. A guy called Richard Taylor went to prison. He was a bad man. He started smoking the Bible, as you do, because it's thin. And he smoked his way through the Bible, and he got to the book of John, and he started reading it, and he ended up getting converted while smoking the Bible. You need the word in your life. I mean, I, it, is, it, it is really thin and you can use it. I've, I've done it myself. It's not good for your chest. But if you haven't got any Rizzlers, you know. Um, thank you, Adam. What a reminder. Fix your eyes upon Jesus. Sometimes we just lose our focus, don't we? I know um, I do. I know we can all do at times. We're going to just take some more time to sing and fix our hearts and minds upon Jesus again. Uh, during, the, during the song, we'll take up our uh, tithes and offerings as well as an act of worship. Father, Jesus, where would we be without you? Lord, so many of us in this room, Lord, right now, can give testimony of your goodness. Lord, your kindness, your mercy at work in our lives, Lord, because if we think where we would be without you, Lord, it's a scary reality. We know that, Lord. We know who you are. We know what you've done. We know, Lord, what you've kept us from and you've pulled us out of. And Lord, for that, we will be eternally grateful. Jesus, we love you. That you gave yourself for us. Lord, for the truth. Lord, like that lady, Lord, with the, Lord, with the issue of blood in the crowds of people, in the hustle and bustle of the marketplace, in the low hive of activity that was going on, Lord. One lady reached out with all that she could do, with all that she had, and she just touched the hem. She just about managed to touch you, Lord. And she received from you. There's a truth there, Lord, in that passage that says Jesus turned 
and look. Jesus turned. He gave his attention to this lady. And Lord, we want to reach out to you this morning, Lord. For some of us, that may be easy, but for some of us, that Lord, that may be extremely difficult, Lord, right now. But we know your word says, Lord, she touched you with the, the thinnest of contacts. Maybe that's all that we've got this morning, Lord, but we want to reach out to you, Jesus. That we would receive something from you, Lord, today. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.
I remember being in a, in a church in Guyana said, why don't we give the Lord a wave offering? Come on, give a wave offering. <laughs> love it, love it. Thank you, worship team. Uh, we, why don't you say a quick 
hello to someone that you maybe have not spoken to this morning. Uh, the children and young people, you're going to go through that door on my left-hand side. Uh, we're going to get ready to come around God's Word. Praise the Father. I can smell garlic bread. Good stuff. Do um, do, 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 do. you all right there, Josh? You look tired, mate. You okay? Stop showing those photos, Patsy. Uh, Shall we take a seat? <laughs> Wonderful. Wonderful, 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 wonderful. Bye, Ian. <laughs> Good stuff. So uh, we are, we're in week 29 of our To Be Continued series. We're going to be in Acts 17 this morning. Um, because of Trudy coming in a couple of weeks, I'm going to try... Well, I've, got, I've got 17 and 18 to do before Trudy comes, so uh, we're just going to touch in uh, a little bit in these two chapters before uh, Trudy comes in a couple of weeks, and then we'll jump in. Are you preaching soon? So Rachel's preaching soon, then you're preaching soon, then Colin's preaching soon. Yeah. Wonderful. Wonderful. Then Paul's preaching soon. Didn't you get the email, Paul? <laughs> Uh, so uh, if you have a church bible uh, you can join and read with us as page 540 if you've got a church bible feel free to grab one Uh, Acts 17 the words are on the screen as well my lovely glamorous assistant will be doing the words for me as well I apologise, it is quite small, but it is um, cheap. So, Acts 17. We're just going to read verses 1 to 9. Now, when they had passed through Amphipolis... Last week, I admired Roger and how he pronounced all the words. I was, when you was reading it, I was thinking, wow, he's, he's really worked at this. He's really worked at this, and now I'm going to make a mockery of this. So... Um, Thank you for that, Rog. Now, when they had passed through Amphipolis, told you, and Apollonia, they came to, I can say Thessalonica, but not Amphipolonia, Thessalonica, where there was a synagogue of the Jews. This is really, I need new glasses. 
And Paul went in, as was his custom, and on three Sabbath days he reasoned with them from the Scriptures, explaining and providing that it was necessary for the Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead, and saying, this Jesus, whom I proclaim to you, is the Christ. I love that. This Jesus is the Christ who I proclaim to you. This Jesus. Who Jesus? This Jesus. There's a sermon in that. And some of them were persuaded and joined Paul and Silas, as did a great many of the devout Greeks, and not a few of the leading women. And, right. But the Jews were jealous, and taking some wicked men of the rabble, they formed a mob, set the city in an uproar, and attacked the house of Jason, seeking to bring them out to the crowd. And when they could not find them, they dragged, dragged Jason and some of the brothers before the city authorities, shouted, I can hear you, Hannah, these men, we have turned the world upside down, have some, have come here. And Jason, he received them, and they were all acting against the decrees of Caesar, saying that there is another King Jesus. And the people and the city authorities were disturbed when they heard these things, and they had taken money as security from Jason, and the rest, they let them go. I want to um, focus a moment on verse 6. It says, And when they could not find them, they dragged Jason and some of the brothers of the city authorities, shouting, These men who have turned the world upside down. These men who have turned the world upside down. These men. These Christians. These disciples. These men who have turned the world upside down. These early Christians. They turned the world upside down. What does your world look like right now? These Christians. Simply, all they did by telling people about Jesus. This Jesus. Love it. They turned the world. They were no, they're making a mess wherever they go. We can't handle it. They're turning the world upside down. And if we truly understand, if we truly grasp the gospel and what it means to our lives, it should turn our world upside down. It should do. There's no two ways about it because it starts with an upside-down king. Let me explain. Paul and his team are on their second missionary journey into Europe. When uh, Dorothy, a minute ago, when you were sharing about the lady Lydia that you met and you speaking to her and you said she was the first woman to come to faith in Europe, I thought you was talking about this lady that you met for a moment and then I remembered. I thought, wow, she's old. And then I remembered. Common sense hit me. I just had a bit of a brain fart there and then. But Paul and his team are on their second missionary trip into Europe. They're at this place called Thessalonica, or Thessalonica, if you want to be posh. Thessalonica. And Thessalonica is a trade city. It was an important place. It was a hub of activity, and it was found in northern Greece. You could go and get your teeth done there now if you want. When Paul arrives there, they go to preach in the synagogue. Paul always started with the synagogue for a number of reasons because he believed that he was called to preach Jesus to the Jews first and foremost. And secondly, whenever you visited a synagogue as a visitor, you were invited to stand up and say hello. If you visited any synagogue as a guest, they would say, oh, I see we've got some visitors in the house this morning. Would you like to stand and give us a greeting? A lot of us wouldn't like that now, would we? When we go to, not me, don't pick on me. But it was, uh, Paul was like, I'm going to hit them straight away. I am Paul, and Jesus was raised from the dead. Boom. And they go, hang on a minute, we want to know where you're from. We didn't, but he would just grab that opportunity, and I loved that. It's like, wherever he goes, he's like, hey, watch this. <laughs> and he's off, and he's preaching in the synagogue, and I've jumped ahead. And Paul tells the Jews very simply that Jesus is the Christ, the Messiah, and that he suffered and he died. 
Christ is the word, the Greek word for Messiah. And according to the Hebrew scriptures, the Messiah was supposed to be from King David's line and was going to rescue the people of Israel. And over time, this promise became less about healing the people's relationship with God and more about overthrowing the oppressors, the Romans. So all those people were waiting for the Messiah to actually pull them away or eradicate the Romans. Take them out! Jesus. And if you look closely at Scripture, though, you will see that the Messiah was always going to suffer. Genesis 22 is the story of Abraham and he he nearly sacrifices his son Isaac because he's put to a test which it points forward to God the Father sacrificing his son on the cross. Isaiah 53 prophesied the Messiah would be a suffering servant, someone who would be despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows acquainted with grief. And as Jesus hung suffering on the cross, he recites the words, of Psalm 22, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? But when Paul says Jesus is the Messiah and he had to suffer and die, to these people it doesn't make sense. That's not our picture of a Messiah. Some get it. Some stop, listen, believe, wow. But others, well, they just get angry, like, nah. He's going to come and he's going to pulverize. I love that word, pulverize, like, like grapes. He's going he's to come and he's going to overthrow the Romans by violence and anger and rrr, all that. Like England batting against the Aussies right now. <laughs> Does anyone know the score? Doesn't matter, not distracted. But they expected the Messiah to come with fury, with muscles with anger, not to suffer. And so Paul offends the Jews by saying their Messiah, which means their promised king, suffered and died. But he also offends the Greeks and the Romans because, well, he wants to upset everybody. Why not? He's on a streak. Because he recognises that Jesus is king, which threatens Caesar and his power. To say Jesus is Lord is a political statement because as far as Caesar was Lord. But Paul's saying, no, Jesus is Lord and he suffered and he died. So he's upset everybody in that one statement. Have you ever walked into a room and managed to upset everybody? There's a skill. Because very simply, Jesus threatens power. He doesn't muscle his way in through the violence that they expected, but he he eases, eases, eases his way in through suffering. Jesus flips the world's patterns upside down by coming not over, but under those who hate him. Jesus threatens their power by modelling a different way, the way of true power through self-sacrifice and submission. And this upside-down king is building an upside-down kingdom. Paul stands for the kingdom of God, a kingdom of the suffering, self-sacrificial saviour. But the Jews and the Greeks and Romans, they only understand the kingdom of this world. The kingdom of the world that trusts power of the sword, while the kingdom of God trusts the power of the cross. The kingdom of the world advances by exercising power over, by might and strength, while the kingdom of God advances by exercising humility, almost a power under. And in our story, the non-Christians trust in the power of the mob. Since they can't find Paul, they drag the one hosting him, Jason, feel sorry for Jason, and some of the other Christians before the city's authorities. The kingdom of the world seeks to control behaviour while the kingdom of God seeks to transform lives from the inside out. The kingdom of the world seeks to control behaviour while the kingdom of God seeks to transform lives from the inside out. 
The kingdom of the world is rooted in advancing one's own self-interest and one's own will, while the kingdom of God is centred on carrying out God's will. God's will. Paul wanted to change their hearts by telling them about the Saviour who died for them. But many in Thessalonica, they didn't want to change. They liked being in power. They had it good. They just wanted to preserve what they already have, which is why when Paul leaves town, they chase him out of the next time town too. Have you ever been banned from a town? I have. Just, uh, just me and Paul, we're, we're the same. For very different reasons. For very, very different reasons. I think I'm still, I think I'm allowed to go back into Kings Lynn now, but at one point I was banned from Kings Lynn. So I can appreciate what Paul felt at that time. <laughs> and they chase him out of not one town but two towns because they don't want anyone near them who might destabilise their power through this gospel message. The kingdom of the world is tribal in nature. The kingdom of God, however, is universal for it is centred on simply loving God as God loves us. It is centred on people living for the sole purpose of demonstrating the love of Jesus to all people at all times, in all places, without condition. Jews, Greeks and Romans in Thessalonica knew if word got back to Caesar that this revolutionary king in their city wasn't going to go well. They knew the best way to safeguard their city was to stop this teaching about a new king and squash any rebellion. The kingdom of the world is a tit-for-tat kingdom. Glad I said that right. Its motto is an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. Hello, farmer. But the kingdom of God, participants carry the cross, not the sword. We're not to return evil with evil and violence for violence. We're to manifest the kingdom life of Christ by returning evil with good, by turning the other cheek, by going the second mile, by loving and praying for our enemies. Jesus says in Matthew 16, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. And the church is a manifestation of the kingdom of God. And we abide by a different constitution than the culture and the country that we live in. We love our enemies and pray for those who persecute us. Much of Acts is a story of believers sacrificing themselves repeatedly for one purpose, to share the gospel. This Jesus, I will give my life for this Jesus. They lived for it. They wanted to bring others to Christ and see this upside-down king build his upside-down kingdom. And we have an upside-down king building an upside-down kingdom. And he wants to do it here in Winton by creating an upside-down church. Many of you will say, Liam, it's already upside-down. You're right. At the triumphant entry of Jesus, right before he rides into Jerusalem on a donkey, James and John are talking with their mother. And their mother loves their sons, James and John, their little darlings. Their little darlings. And she feels like, I'm going to try and get, my, while I can, while Jesus is in front of me, she wants to grab an opportunity. Oh, Jesus, um, by the way, uh, is it possible for... James and John, my, my lovely sons, they're lovely, look at them, James and John, and they're... Uh, is it possible that they can sit left and right with you in, in your kingdom? Not knowing exactly what she was asking. She must be thinking that he's going to ride into Jerusalem, he's going to overthrow the Romans and set himself as, as king on his, on his uh, throne, like you, Margaret, you sat on your throne right now. 
and, and she must be thinking that she, Jesus is going to let James sit here and John sit there. there. She's not thinking of a heavenly throne, but an earthly one. She wants her boys to become powerful. She wants to get in while she can and give Jesus a little nudge. Just let my boys in, will you? Just let my boys in. But Jesus tells James and John, you have no idea what you're asking for. But they will drink the cup he drinks, he says. They will drink the cup of suffering, which Jesus drinks on the cross. Matthew 20, it says, Jesus called to him and said, you know that the rulers of Gentiles lord it over them and their great ones exercise authority over them. It shall not be so among you. Whoever would be great among you must be your servant and whoever would be first among you must be your slave, even as the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Jesus says that the rulers of the Gentiles use and abuse their power. They exercise power over others. But you, he says, are to exercise power under. You're to be a servant. You're to serve others like Jesus did, even giving up your life for others. An upside-down church is a place full of upside-down people exercising the power of the cross. We serve and love and care for those in need and don't try to exert power over them. I get scared by power. I don't, I'm, I'm anti-authority. There's something in me, maybe a disorder of some description, but I rebel against... I, rebe- I hate it. And I... I get scared when I walk into a room and people try and exercise this false sense of power over me. I don't like it. I struggle with it. It makes me cringe. What I don't like is this false sense of perceived authority and power that makes people think that they have a right to lord it over someone else or that they're better than someone else because of the shoes that they wear, because of the job that they're in. Jesus says, they just lord it over them. They abuse their power. If you are put in such a position, don't abuse it, but serve it. It's a privilege. Don't somehow wheel your way in so you can make people think lesser than you, but what, because you've got a suit on? Well, well done. I'm going to rant about something in a minute. I can feel it bubbling up inside me. But I won't, Hannah. You're right. Wisdom, see? Listen to your wife. But it is funny where this false sense of power is exercised and abused. Jesus is the one who had it all. The one who had absolute Sovereign power over all things. And he didn't come to lord it. He didn't come to abuse it. He came to serve. He came to serve the lost and the least. Wholeheartedly. He humbled himself. He became human and allowed himself to be crucified. He emptied himself. He died. Jesus died an upside down king, but then God raised him from the dead. Boom, Jesus, boom. He rose again to new life, and yet he still exercises power under. He sends his upside down kingdom into the world to turn it upside down. Person by person. When they come into contact with the gospel, their whole world is turned upside down. When you grasp what it means to follow Jesus, when you grasp what it means to live in his kingdom every single day, your world is turned upside down. Your values may be turned upside down. The culture that you've been exposed to is challenged. Your whole world is turned upside down until one day, 
as Paul writes these words in 1 Thessalonica. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a cry of command. With the voice of an archangel and with the sound of the trumpet of God, the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will always be with the Lord. Paul writes this letter as he's, as he's been chased out. He was probably there for three weeks in Thessalonica. Thess Thessalonica. Thessalonica. That's a new place. What was I going to say? So he gets chased out. After three weeks of being with those people, he's off. They don't want him. And he's off from the next town, but he makes time to write a letter. And he wants to assure them. And he wants to promise them that whatever you're going through, hold fast. Because one day, as he finishes that, we will always be with the Lord. This passage is about the return of the king. When a king comes to visit, you go out to greet him, just like the crowds did when Jesus' triumphal entry on the donkey. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. Rah! That's what we're going to do when Jesus returns. But we'll go to greet our coming saviour. We'll go up to greet our king and we'll return in victory to the new heavens and the new earth and the eternal Jesus with our victorious king. One day, Jesus will turn his upside down church right side up. And all things will be made new. All things. But until that day, we will continue to serve our upside-down king and establish his upside-down kingdom. I want to see people's lives turned upside-down for the glory of God. Those that believe they're nothing. Those that believe they're broken and that God's had enough with them. Those that believe that there's nothing left for them to live for in this world because all that the world says is you've failed, you're a mistake, you've got no money in your bank, you've got no qualifications, you are rubbish. That is what this world speaks. Like if, you're sh if your car isn't shiny, then you've got nothing good. If you can't wear the designer clothes, then you're nothing. If you haven't got a decent job, then you're nothing. The culture of this world will speak that over everybody. Children comparing themselves through social media that they're nothing, that they're worthless, that they're broken because they're not like the, the movie clips of everybody else's life. But my God, my God, this Jesus says, you're more than that. And I'm going to turn your world upside down. And I want to live in that place. But one day, one day, that upside down kingdom will be turned right side up. And we will meet him in the air. Let's stand. This Jesus. Oh. This Jesus. This Jesus who turned my world upside down. Who transformed my life. This Jesus who was raised from the dead took on all my sin and shame. This Jesus who set me free from myself. This Jesus who continues to reach into my brokenness in the darkest places of my need and say, Liam, you're more than this. This Jesus who walks with me every single day, who breathes life over me every single day, who gives me hope every single day. This Jesus is here and is at work in our lives. This Jesus, he will get in your car with you tomorrow morning as you go to work and you pray, I can't do this. I can't do this anymore. But this Jesus stands with you and sits with you and walks with you. He says, don't worry, I've got you. Let me carry you today. Let me give you the words to speak. Let me give the strength to your soul. Let me carry your burdens today. This Jesus. This Jesus. Who carried his own cross. Who 
walk was the tool of his own death. Allowed himself to be nailed, fixed to this instrument, knowing full well he was going to experience the most painful, excruciating, suffocating death. This Jesus gave himself to us. This Jesus who allowed his last breath, his last bit of life to go. It is finished. Gave his self. This Jesus. broken for you. But this Jesus rose from the dead. Walked out of that tomb. Conquered death. For one purpose. To rid the world of sin. that we could be right before God. This Jesus, an eternal gift to the whole of humanity, bridging the gap, bringing life, abundant life, turning worlds upside down, revolutionary, redemption, You want to know if God loves you? Look to Jesus. You want to know if God is with you? Look to Jesus. Because he's still walking with you. Father, we thank you for turning our worlds upside down. And Lord, once we known you. Once we've tasted and we've seen, Lord, there's, Lord, we're no good for anything else. But walking with you continually. Because we want more of you, Lord. We want to be your kingdom wherever we are. We want to be carriers of your kingdom tomorrow into our workplaces, into our communities. That we would see your kingdom come. Your upside down kingdom, Lord, would come all around us. That we would see people changed, transformed, rescued, redeemed, set free, Lord. What a joy. What a joy. We thank you, Lord, that you're not finished yet. That you are continuing to plant hope into people's lives. Thank you, Lord, that you use us in simple ways, in ways of love, in ways of service. Help us, Lord, to see those opportunities. Help us, Lord, by giving the words to speak, the compassion to love, the, 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 the resources to care for, Lord. Whatever it is, Lord, that we need, Lord, would we find it all in you? That one day we will meet you in the air and we will be just like him. Amen. Amen. Boom, Jesus, boom. Thank you. Church, you lovely people. Tea and coffee will be hosted by the lovely Paul and Carmen. Look at that. <laughs> Through the door on our left. 
uh, feel free to join us for refreshments. Um, all that you need, information, the dates are wrong, but um, guess the days, it's on the back of your bulletin. And um, have a great week. God bless. Thank you.